Hi, I'm Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and today I'd like to teach you a very easy but fun technique of stenciling cookies, but we're not going to stencil in the traditional sense where you use royal icing and smear over the top of the stencil. We're going to actually paint the cookies using edible uh, luster dust. This is the Alan Tatro uh, line of the hybrid luster dust. You can use any luster dust. Uh, these work really well because they have a really nice shine to them and they're totally FDA approved and edible. I wanted to show you that cookies can be done with traditional cookie stencils or you can take a regular side stencil that you would use on a cake and you can take one design from that and, and use that on a cookie. So don't feel that you have to stick to just cookie stencils when you're looking for ideas. It's more important that you look for the size of the stencil when you're shopping and make sure that each of the elements of it are not too tall to put on a cookie. This one happens to work great. It's a great child's birthday or baby shower theme. So we're gonna be painting a little lion today and we're gonna do a more traditional flower one as well. Over on my left here are a tray of cookies that we've done uh, with different colors and other stenciling patterns, not the ones I showed you here. There's hundreds and hundreds of stencil patterns available for you to choose from. So let's get started. We're going to start with the traditional flower. I like using a mixture of 50% fondant and 50% of uh, sculpting chocolate. And the sculpting chocolate that we sell the most and seems to be very popular is made by Fonda Riftic. It's their sculpting chocolate and we do ship this year round now. In the summertime if you receive it and it's really soft or even um, it, it seems too soft to work with, just put it in the refrigerator for a few hours and then it's great to go. It won't separate, it just gets soft. So I mix 50% fondant and 50% of the sculpting chocolate. The reason I do is because fondant alone is very stretchy and when I go to remove this this circle that I've stenciled and painted and place it on the cookie it can stretch out of shape. By adding a little bit of the chocolate to it or, or half chocolate it prevents that stretchiness. It also gives you a really yummy cookie. Okay so let's get started. We'll start by doing the uh, the traditional flour and we'll start with some yellow fondant. I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch on a board and lay that on there. Make sure it doesn't stick. And I'm going to roll this a little bit thicker than I normally would want it on a cookie. And you'll see why in a second. This is actually a fairly large piece. I didn't need it that large. Okay, that's a little bit thicker than I would normally want on a cookie. I'm going to take a wide brush and just a little bit of Crisco or some sort of a, a, a white shortening and I'm very very lightly going to brush the center of this. You don't need to worry about adding the shortening uh, to the chocolate fondant mixture. When you cut off the, the remainder you can just knead that all together and it won't affect it at all. I put the shortening on so that the stencil sticks to it. I want that to adhere right there. Now I'm going to roll this again until the fondant mixture just pops up in between. Don't press real hard, but you can see that it's thinning it a little bit more. And that's actually why I started with a little thicker fondant. Now it's as thin as I would normally put on a cookie. So let's make sure it doesn't stick. And now we can paint the center. I'm just going to remove some of this excess. Okay, and I'm going to sort of reposition myself. When I'm painting cookies, I do like to sit. It helps me to be a little bit steadier. Get a paper towel. So I, I have some colors all set. I'm going to be using a couple of different pinks. And I'm going to use two different greens. And you can use either uh, an alcohol like gin or vodka, a clear alcohol, um, or you can use Everclear, which is an edible uh, flammable alcohol they sell in liquor stores for flambéing, or you can use lemon extract. Make sure you don't use lemon juice, use lemon extract because it has alcohol in it. 
And I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol or a lemon extract in the caps. And then just a little bit of the powder. Some of these I've already put powder in. I don't really want a lot. It really it goes it goes far. Okay. So I'm going to start with my pink. I'm going to layer the colors. So I'm going to start with the lightest pink. And that's this one. Try not to put too much lemon extract in. You you do want to you don't want a really runny mixture. And then it's important to blot your brush after you've mixed that. So I'm going to start with the lightest color and I'm going to paint the rose buds a light pink. And then I'm going to go to a little deeper color. You can go over them more than once if you like just to sort of deepen the colors. Okay, and now I'm going to go to a little darker pink. Again, blot the brush. I need a little bit more. The alcohol from the lemon extract does cause it to evaporate rapidly, so just keep adding a couple drops at a time. So now I'm just going to accent this. Make some of these little portions just a little bit darker. There. And now I'm going to do a couple of the greens. Again, start with the, the lighter color. This is the honeydew. Blot your brush. And then I'm going to do all the greens. Little tendrils. This is a great project to do with kids. I would choose a stencil that isn't as complicated and maybe give them two, two or three colors to work with. Um, you don't have to worry so much about layering colors. They can just do one color per, per section. But it's, it's really super easy to, to do. Um, and the final project is really nice. So I've colored all the green parts that I wanted to get done with a light green. And now I'm going to go to a little bit darker green. And this is the apple green. The different shades just give it a little bit more movement. I'm really only adding one or two drops of the lemon extract at a time so that I don't mix more than I need. Okay. And I'll be the first to admit, I'm not a painter. Uh, that, this is not my forte, but this is how easy this is. I, really, anybody can do this. I'm going to go back to my lighter pink. I had put some of the dark pink on, and I just sort of wanted to diffuse that and sort of blend it in. So I'm just going over the top. There. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. And now I'm going to put this on a cookie. So I'll move this aside so you can see what I'm doing. I have some cookies already baked. I'm just going to remove this stencil. Now remember the, the shortening has, it really has adhered that. So lift up from the back and just hold this down with your hand and lift that right, stencil right off the fondant. Make sure that it's moving freely on the board. And then use a cutter. Now, in this case, I use this cutter to make the cookie. So you want to use the same size cutter that you made the cookie with to cut out the fondant. I'm choosing this time to use a scallop shape uh, to cut the fondant out, but you could use the plain round as well. I place it right over the top and center it. 
and then just press straight down and make sure that it's cut out nice and evenly around the edge. There. Now take a little bit of corn syrup, just like caro syrup, or you can use a little bit of piping gel. And I'm just, you don't have to cover the whole cookie, but you sort of want little sticky spots so that the fondant chocolate mixture sticks to the cookie. I find that the, um, the corn syrup works really well. There. And then just lift this up and place it right on top of the cookie. Make sure you center it in the beginning because you won't be able to move it once it's on. And there you have a completed cookie. It's very, very easy to do. You can be as detailed or not detailed as you want to be with the painting. You really don't need to be an artist and a painter in, able, uh, in order to be able to use stencils and paint beautiful cookies. I'm certainly not a painter, but I would be happy to, to, uh, to serve this at, at any party or any gathering. So that's a traditional cookie stencil done with painting. So now I'm going to show you how to make the, uh, the lion and we're going to use a 50-50 mixture of the chocolate and fondant uh, and we're, just, we're not going to color it this time, we're just going to use the white. So again start with a little bit of cornstarch on your board, a little on top so it doesn't stick to your rolling pin. Remember to roll it a little bit thicker than you want it in the end, just about like that. Use a little bit of Crisco or white vegetable shortening. And just lightly put it on there. And then this time I've got this nice big stencil and I'm going to do the lion. So I'm just going to set that in the center and roll from the center out. And that will thin the fondant mixture a little bit and it also makes the fondant sort of pop up in between the stencil. This time we're going to use some golds and yellows. And I'm also using a copper. So we'll start with the copper. We're going to do the eyes first and the mouth. Whoops. Good catch. All right, that's already evaporated on me. There. So we'll do the eyes. Now, just as you're layering colors, um, different intensities of colors, you can also use the same color and do layers. So I'm starting with a very thin co uh, covering of this copper. I'll let that dry for a minute and I'll come back and I'll put another layer on and that will deepen the color. It actually just deposits more of the of the luster dust in the um, on the um, on the design. So we'll come right back to that in a sec. But I do want to get a little bit of color of this copper color in the background. Like right around the front of the feet. And let's see, I did a little bit of the ends of, uh, of the mane. Not every one. And just to give a little bit of shadow right around the, the face. And then lastly, the bottoms of the ears. I'm going to be covering this with another color. All right, and then I'm going to, now that that eye has dried a little bit, I'm going to go back and just deepen those a little bit. There. And let's go with the lighter yellow now. This is the canary yellow. Hmm. <clears throat> And we're just going to fill in. You can also use this technique on the side of a cake 
but it's a little bit more difficult because you sort of have to adhere the whole stencil um, to the side of the cake um, and then paint on the side. So it is a little bit more challenging, but it can be done. Okay, and I'm going to go back over the ears, even though I put the little copper color behind it. I'm just going back over these to give them a little darker color. There. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit deeper orange color. and just do some accents. And this one happens to be the sunburst orange. And I'm just gonna go around the back of the legs. It's just sort of layering the colors that really makes a difference. Okay. So this is one of those projects where you could, you could go on and on and on until you think it's absolutely perfect. Um, but I don't think I need to, to show you that. I just wanted to show you the technique involved here. So one more thing I think I'm gonna add is a little bit of green, just in case this grass comes out on the side. Whoops. I want to make sure that it's colored. I'm not quite sure where my cutter is going to come out, so I'll color this just in case. There. Okay. Same thing as last time. Lift your stencil, hold your paste down, and then put your stencil aside. Take your cutter. Center it, however you want to do it. Just cut that out. Now, if you have any color, like here, just cut the color out and the rest of your paste can be reused. The parts with the color you won't be able to, unless you, unless you want a, a, a piece of fond that that color to use, and then, then go ahead and keep it. Again, I'm going to color, uh, cover the cookie with a little bit of corn syrup or piping gel. It doesn't need to cover the complete cookie. You just need enough on there so that it adheres to the cookie. And then just center that and set it down. And there again, you have the completed lion cookie. Super easy to do. I used three or four colors and you get a nice three-dimensional effect. So that's the, the easy lesson in uh, decorating cookies using a gum paste, or excuse me, a fondant chocolate mixture and uh, edible highlighter, uh, hybrid luster dust. Uh, you just need some lemon extract or an alcohol, uh, some fine brushes, um, I did use these uh, clear acrylic brushes. This is the Alan Tatro line of paint brushes. They're, they are not the traditional wood handles with a, a painted surface that they crack and they flake off when you wash them and repeatedly use them. These are nice plastic acrylic handles. Um, use the uh, double zero or uh, single zero brushes, the very small ones, for doing really tiny uh, detailed work. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. All the products are available at globalsugarart.com. Thank you and have a great day.